okay so we'll start with uh, looking into the syllabus okay first we'll see what all is the syllabus what we'll learn here it is okay so what is the course objective of this subject so you'll be learning fundamentals of regular and context free grammars and languages you'll understand the relation between regular language and finite automata and machines uh, you'll be designing automata then you'll be learning regular language context free language pda and turing machine then you learn pda as acceptor and turing machine as calculator and then learn application of automata theory okay uh, so after learning this what should you learn what is the outcome of this subject you have you can explain analyze and design regular language regular expression and grammar design different types of finite automata and machine as acceptor very uh, verifier and translator then you will you can design context free language and grammar you can design push down automata you can design turing machine and you can understand the application of various automata so this is the outcome so prerequisite of this subject is you should know basic mathematical fundamentals like sets logic relations and functions okay so for that we have our first unit prerequisite we'll just go through the fundamentals and then we'll go to uh, our actual syllabus okay in chapter one we'll be learning about the regular language regular expression okay and all those things then finite automata in finite automata we'll see different types of finite automata that is dfa nfa then how to convert this regular language to a machine okay and there are even different types of finite automata with output more machine and milli machine what are the limitations of this machine we'll be learning that next is context free grammar in context free grammar we'll be learning how to write the grammar how to derive a given string okay and different types of grammar then again in push down automata we'll be designing push down automata and using this grammar how to convert the given grammar to given push down automata we'll be learning that then the last machine that we'll be learning in this is turing machine okay and some theory part of turing machine uh, then the last one is application of automata we'll be learning what are different applications of automata okay so these are the things that we'll be learning in this subject okay coming to the subject is the subject very difficult yes it is till you understand the subject till you know the subject it is difficult as someone said that all things are difficult before they are easy if you learn it is very easy if you don't learn it is very very difficult it is very easy to score it is very easy to fail okay if you are not willing to learn no one can 
help you if you are determined to learn no one can stop you this is uh, the saying a very good quote given by some author uh so why you have to learn this subject what is this subject all about first and foremost as a software engineer automata theory is a must to develop any language to develop any language you require automata theory okay so um, in any language the compiler uses these machines okay so we'll not go in detail that how it is used it is a different subject actually so just in this course we'll be learning how these sub, how this automata theory can be used in different application okay so what are the applications of automata theory that will be learn this is the core subject that you should know as a software engineer this is for one thing the second thing is for any exam like gate exam if you see you have 20% of uh, the questions from automata theory okay so even if you are giving any competitive exams you should learn automata theory so that is why you need to learn this subject there are different research areas of automata theory like it is used in cryptography it is used in your design and analysis of algorithms it is used in quantum calculation it is used in logic within computer science then computational difficulty randomness within calculation correction errors as i already mentioned even in compiler construction okay it is used in compiler construction okay these are different research areas of automata theory okay so next is introduction to automata theory so before going to introduction uh students i just uh, want to say few things that this uh lecture that is automata theory uh will be completely like uh, interactive session whatever i ask you whatever i uh whatever uh, i teach you i'll ask questions on that and i want reply from you people so be ready with your notebook and pen from the next lecture okay you have to solve this uh, solve the, the problems and uh, you have to give the answer okay and uh, mm, one more thing is uh, students you need to attend all the lectures because if you miss any of the lecture it is difficult to understand okay and if you understand it is very easy okay uh so this is all about the subject uh you can refer to few of the reference books like uh, vivek nayar vivek kulkarni sorry uh automata theory or the theory of computer science by vivek kulkarni you can find many solved examples there okay so as uh, in previous uh, syllabus uh, there was one hour tutorial given for this subject separate one hour tutorial after three hours lecture but in this syllabus they have uh, removed one hour tutorial so it is difficult to solve all the problems right in the lecture during one hour so i expect you people to solve those examples okay i'll give you the questions you have to solve by yourself okay and if you require that you want me to check those uh, um questions that you have solved 
you can send me or put it on in the classroom okay i will send you the classroom code today please do join the classroom uh, from uh, next lecture will be i'll all the communication will be through classroom okay i'll not send uh, the link on the whatsapp group i'll be sending it through the classroom so be in the classroom join the classroom okay the further communication will be in the classroom okay uh, so any doubt about the subject and it is completely numerical subject i repeat it is completely numerical subject okay uh, is there any doubt you want to know about the subject anyone any question any doubt okay you have 80 marks questions uh, sorry uh, 80 marks paper and uh, 20 marks internals okay and students as i said i, I again repeat that uh, it is completely numerical you have to solve each and every question as much as you solve the subject becomes very easy you can score full marks in this subject okay and uh, don't take the subject very lightly because if you don't understand if you don't attend the lecture it is very easy to fail also because you get zero or you get 10 in this subject okay so uh, before the lockdown that is uh, before online uh, this one the percentage of passing was really very low of this subject okay once your offline starts maybe your exam will be offline i hope your exams are offline i teach you in the class okay i wish i teach you in the class uh it is very difficult this subject is difficult if you don't understand but if you understand the subject it is very easy i'll try to make it very easy okay again i repeat please the class should be interactive okay uh, since this is the first lecture we'll uh, do some introduction part of the subject okay uh any other thing you want to know shall we start then shall we start with introduction to automated theory then yes ma'am okay yes ma'am yeah thank you so introduction to automata theory i think you people know that uh, the same subject is uh, learnt by your friends computer friends in fifth semester the name of the subject is theory of computation or theory of computer science okay uh, what is this automata theory this is a theoretical division of mathematics as well as computer science it is combination of computer engineering and uh, mathematics okay and it mostly deals with computation logic or computation problems with respect to automata what do you mean by automata automata means machine okay automata theory allows the researchers to know how machines calculate the functions as well as resolve problems okay what exactly automata theory is all about automata theory is all about the machines how the problem is solved by a machine we understand how machines are built or designed and then how it is used to solve the problem okay that is automata theory 
Okay, coming to problems. As we said, automata theory is used like to design uh, a machine for a given problem. So problem can be thought of as, uh, can be thought in two different ways. That is one is solvable problem, one is unsolvable problem. One thing we need to know is not all the problems are solvable. Okay, once the problem is solved, it is not a solvable problem. Okay, so before the solution was found, every problem is unsolvable. Hope you are, I'm getting, okay. What is, there are two types of problems. One is solvable and one is sol, uh, unsolvable. All the problems before finding the solution is obviously unsolvable problem. Once there is a solution for that, then it is known as solvable problem. Okay. So now, so what is the solvable problem and unsolvable problem? We'll see with an example. Okay. So Konigsberg bridge problem. There is a very well-known problem. Okay. Known as Konigsberg bridge problem. Uh, there is a place known as Konigsberg in uh, present Russia. It is also known as seven bridge problem. Okay. Uh, so what is this exactly? If you see, there are three lines, A, B, C, and D. Okay, A and D are island. There is water flowing here. Okay, there is a river here. There are four lines connected, A, B, C, and D. Okay, so these are bridges. There are seven bridges, if you see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven seven bridges. Uh, A and C are directly connected through two bridges. A and B are directly connected through two bridges. A and D is connected to one bridge. And D and C is directly connected to one bridge. D and B is directly connected with one bridge. So we have seven bridges connecting this four island, sorry, four land, okay? And we have river here flowing. Okay, so this problem was during uh, maybe in uh, 1700, somewhere, somewhere there. Okay, people wanted to know whether all this land can be visited any number of time. Okay, but traversing through these all the bridges at least once. Okay, and the bridges should not be taken twice. Okay, you can travel through the bridges. Okay, and you have to you have to travel through all the bridges only once. And you you can travel through. Uh, you can uh, land. Uh, on any uh, on any of the land. Okay, and you have to start from one land and reach that land again. That is source and destination is same. If I start from A, I have to reach back A. So I have to traverse through all the bridges exactly once. Okay, I can uh, land on these islands any number of time. This was the problem, okay? That the problem was that you have to travel through all the bridges and source and destination should be same. Okay, there were many scientists who worked on this. And lastly, the problem was solved using graph theory by Euler's. Okay, the same thing is represented using graph. If you see, See this, A, C, B, D, A, C, B, D, okay? So A is connected to C using two bridges, so two lines, 
it is known as two edges right okay a is connected to b using two edges in graph theory these lines are known as edges and these land here circle are known as vertices okay i hope you know this students have you learned graph theory yes ma'am yeah okay so you know this right so i need not explain this in detail so the same problem the same problem is represented using graph okay so now uh find the degree of each vertices okay students can you tell me what is the degree of a you know what is the degree students you know what is the degree what is a degree of a vertex what do you mean by degree find degree of the vertices if you don't know tell me do you don't know no problem with that do you don't know? know you don't know okay fine what do you mean by uh, degree is uh, find the number of edges connected to that vertices okay that is if i take a how many edges are connected to this a 1 2 3 4 and 5 i hope you got it what are edge uh, degree the number of edges that are connected to the vertices okay so a has how many degree now 5 five very good c b very good d b very good b three yes very three. good okay so now we have found the number of vertices of all sorry number of degree for all the vertices right okay so now we we'll look into this what is the problem statement what problem statement says if the seven bridges of the city of konigsberg can all be traversed in a single trip without doubling back that is the bridge should not be traversed twice okay with the additional requirement that the trip ends in the same place it began okay i can reach the city any number of time but the bridge should be traversed only once that is the problem statement now we'll see okay they said that uh that is the source should be the destination right from where i live i should reach the same city back that is the problem statement so if i leave the city right i'll just mark it okay see if this is my city okay if i leave the city this city i have to reach back this city right if i leave this city i have to reach back this city i may visit any number of uh cities here but i have to reach back this city okay so if i leave the leave this city and come back to this city what is the degree of this world vertex it should be obviously even i leave and i reach back so it should be even any number of time i may visit this go back to some other uh, city and come back that is this is my vertex in uh, graph theory this is my vertex if i leave this vertex and come back so the degree of this vertex is always even i can traverse any number of vertex i can travel 
any number of vertex and I'll reach back, right? I can go here, come back. I can go here, here, here and come back. But this should be even, right? If you see, this should be even. Coming to the intermediate vertices, that is which is not source or destination, right? So what it says, if I come to this city, I have to leave this city because this is not my source, neither my source nor my destination, right? So if I come to this city, I have to leave this city. So obviously again, the degree should be even, right? But in this example, if we see, all the vertices are odd. So what Euler said this is, there is no solution for this problem because the word using graph theory, he proved, or I can say he mathematically proved that this problem is not solvable. So now till he proved this, this problem was unsolvable problem. But now since Euler said that he mathematically proved that this problem is not solvable. Now this problem is known as solvable problem. I hope you people are getting me. Okay. What do you mean by solvable problem? It need not be that it has a solution. The solution may be positive or negative. You may mathematically prove that this problem cannot be solved. Then the problem is known as solvable problem. I hope you people are getting students. What is yes, solvable? Okay. See this till Euler's proved this, that there is no solution for this. This problem was known as unsolvable problem. But once he mathematically proved, you have to prove it mathematically. You have to prove it with logic that this problem has no solution, then that problem becomes the unsolvable problem becomes solvable problem. Okay. So this was about solvable and unsolvable problem. I hope you people are understanding me. Okay. So what is solvable and unsolvable problem? Now we can define it as Solvable problem are the problems with solution. The solution may be negative or positive. That is solution may be negative means there is no, you, uh, there is a proof that the problem cannot be solved. Okay, that is solvable problem. Okay, now coming to the next part, we should know what is computation, what are different computational devices. Okay. So in this subject automata theory, uh, we look at various computational models. Okay, based on kind of resources, Resources means uh, depending on what all they use. Okay, different computational models means like uh, as we just saw in our syllabus, like finite automata, uh, push down automata, PDA, Turing machine. Okay, we'll uh, see through all these computational models. For these models, we consider their power and limitations. Okay, what is the limitation? What are the power? That is, what are the advantages of these machines? What are the, or I can say in other words, what are the problems they can solve? In, in which problems these machines can be used? Or which problems cannot be solved by these machines? Okay, so we will start with understanding what is computation. So what is computation then? Computation is step-by-step -step solution to a problem. Step-by-step -step solution to a problem. Okay, 
So if we are given a two number, if we are given with two numbers, okay, three and two, for example, we want to multiply these two numbers. We know how to multiply. We know the algorithm, right? If we uh, add three two times, we get product of uh, three into two. If I say five into four, if I add five four times, I'll get the answer, right? Similarly, if I want to search a word in the dictionary, we know how the dictionary is arranged, right? In an order. So randomly, if I open a page, what we'll do? We usually open randomly a page and we see whether the word, the alphabet is before that page or the alphabet is before uh, or uh, the alphabet is next to that page. And then we repeat this, right? Or to find a path, okay? So we know how to do all these things. That is, we know the algorithm. We know step-by-step -step method, right? How to solve these questions. So this is known as computation. That is, step-by-step solution to a given problem. Coming to what are computational devices. What kind of computational model or device we use to get these solutions? As uh, just now I said, three into two. What is the device we use? If I want hundred, uh, so like 1113 into 24, which device we use. If I want 10 raised to 13 into uh, 1, uh, 1 1.3 raised to uh, minus 14 divided by 2 raised to uh, 25, something like that. What kind of uh, device we use, right? We use different devices for each of this, right? If I just want to uh, calculate 3 into 2. I just uh, take my fingers or in uh, I can use uh, just my brain and give the answer. As and when you increase uh, what is that complexity of the problem, the devices also are different. The complexity of the devices also goes on increasing. Right? So the basic computational devices we can think of is pay, pen and paper, okay? As a kid, if I say uh, multiply three into two, you could have taken paper, right? And pen, you could have written that, right? So that is also a computational device. The paper and pen we use for computation or you use calculators, you use even your uh, smartphones, right? Okay, if the complexity increases, you use computer, that is you write the algorithm and solve the problem, right? So these are your computational devices, the devices which we use to solve any problem. Okay, uh, as just now I said, we observe that depending on complexity of the problem, we choose our devices, right? If just we are given with uh, 120 into uh, 24, uh, we can use pen and paper. We need not write algorithm, sit and write algorithm and use computer for that, right? I'm not talking of calculator in the computer, okay? So in this course, we'll study computational devices based on their resources that they use. As just now I mentioned, we'll be learning finite automator, we'll be learning uh, Turing machine, we'll be learning pushdown automator. These are different machines, okay? That depending on their resources, depending on their complexity, we'll be learning this. Okay, we'll, be, we'll also study uh, advantage and disadvantage of each of this computational device. Okay, we'll also see what type of problems can be solved 
by these devices what problems cannot be solved by these devices okay as just now i said what is automata automata means mathematical machine or mathematical system okay so study of this machine is known as automata okay so we uh, will learn this how to design algorithm we will be learning how to design algorithm not only design algorithm to design optimal algorithm okay for any given problem what do you mean by optimal see uh as now we uh, looked into few example we can use computer for even for we can set and write algorithm for multiplication of 3 into 2 right but we don't do that we use pen and paper or maximum we use calculator right why because that is optimal we can use computer even using computer we can write the algorithm and solve 3 into 2 but is it optimal no so we use pen and paper or calculator right similarly you may ask why we are learning so many uh, machines when only one machine can do it right the machine with higher complexity that will be learning that is turing machine why we are not learning only that why we want we should learn finite automata why we should learn pde as just now i said we are learning optimal solution we are not using turing machine for all the problems right so that's why we'll be learning all these machines okay so in this subject we learn we'll first see the problem whenever a problem is given first and foremost we'll check whether the problem is solvable or not and then we'll see which machine should be used to solve this problem okay so this is what we'll be learning in this subject so theory of computer science is also sometimes known as theory of formal language okay formal language so what is this formal language as uh, just now we saw that any machine is a automata that is it is a digital device okay if we take example of any digital device we need to communicate with these devices right and it is very difficult to communicate with devices so i am communicating with you i am communicating through my language right a uh, known language that is known language to you known language to me okay if it was offline i would communicate with you not only through uh the speech but also through my eyes through hands right you can see the emotions on my face right which is difficult in our online class so there are different ways of expressing right the tone we communicate through our tone okay if we increase our tone decrease our tone right you understand what's going on right maybe i am uh, talking very low so you may feel that there is some problem or i may uh, speak very loudly that you will understand that okay uh, mom is uh, angry something like that so we communicate our uh, our speech gives our expression our gesture gives our expression this is how we communicate okay but this communication is very complex right so how to communicate with the device we cannot communicate with our gestures we cannot uh, the system or the devices cannot understand the emotions the expressions 
So we require something to communicate to machine. We require some language to communicate, right? So that is our formal language. Formal language is simple language to communicate to machine. Okay. So these languages is formed by grammar. We'll see what are all this. Okay. In our next lecture. So these languages are recognized by machine. Okay. So this was a short introduction to the subject. That is what is automata theory, what you will be learning. This is, this was just a base for your subject. Okay. The one, whichever, whatever I thought uh, is not in the syllabus. Whatever I have thought today is not in your syllabus, but this may help you in uh, cracking your gate exam. Okay, what is solvable, what is unsolvable. Okay, you should understand this first before going into the subject in depth. Okay, I hope I'm clear with the, the introduction. Uh, if you have any doubt, if you want to know why, what this subject is all about, you can ask me any question. If you want even to have a formal talk, you can have a formal talk, okay? We have 15 minutes more. You want to know anything, you can ask me. I'm uh, stopping my share. Okay. Students, you are free to ask any question. Yes, uh, who is this? Anupam. Uh, you can refer, as I said, Vivek uh, Kulkarni. Okay. Mm, it is Theory of Computer Science by Vivek Kulkarni. You can refer to that. Uh, there is another uh, textbook by Kavi Mahesh. You can refer to that. There are many uh, textbooks given in your... Uh, syllabus if you can just go through the syllabus uh, if you want to know the subject in depth you can refer to the reference uh, textbooks given like Hofcroft, then Cohen okay you, you can go through that uh, JC Martin okay so and if you want to just, you know, want to stick to your syllabus, you can refer Vivek Kulkarni, Theory of Computation. Yes, yes, this lecture is recorded, Shitaj. Okay, as I said, uh, please join the classroom. I'll be sending the link. Okay, and uh, students, as I said, please uh, be in the class. Okay, attend all the lectures. Uh, I hope you people are understanding uh, whatever I'm teaching. And uh, anytime, anytime, if you feel that I'm going very fast, anytime if you are feeling that I'm getting, uh, going very slow, you can stop me and tell me that uh, that I, I'll go more slow or I'll uh, repeat the things again. Okay. Yes, yes. Yes, Rehan, you'll get the recorded lecture. Okay. And uh, if you have any doubt during the lecture, you can ask me then and there itself, or you can uh, message me about your doubt. 
if you don't want to ask in the class you can ask me later on also no issues in that if you have any doubt any kind of doubt maybe silly doubt you can ask me okay there will be no problem in that but what i suggest is if you have a doubt you clear it then and there itself because each and every machine is connected to each other each and every lecture is connected to each other if you have doubt in today's lecture it is difficult to understand in your next lecture okay so it is better to solve your doubt clear your doubt then and there itself okay and students i hope everyone has uh, renamed yourself no there are few students who have not renamed please rename yourself okay make it permanent so that whenever you enter the class we know you with your name proper roll number and name okay and uh, be attentive in the class i may ask any question randomly to any student uh sonu mondal yeah what is solvable and unsolvable problem if you prove that this is the solution for this problem or if you prove that there is no solution to this problem then it is solvable problem a problem is solvable if you prove that you should prove okay i think i am getting you should prove logically mathematically that this is the solution for this problem or you should prove mathematically that there is no solution for this problem okay then the problem is known as solvable problem okay if you say this can be solved this way this can be solved this way you may get the result then it is not solvable you should have a proper proof that as we saw right the seven bridge problem it was proved by euler that since the node or the vertex should have even number of degree and we don't have even a number of degree for any of it then how can i get a solution so there is no solution for this so that he proved it that there is no solution for this problem so the problem is now known as solvable problem before that before that proof people were just finding कि क्या ऐसे हो सकता है अच्छा कैन आई गो फ्रॉम ए टू बी बी टू सी नहीं ये नहीं हो सकता नहीं नहीं इसके लिए सोल्यूशन ही नहीं है इफ यू से दैट देन इट इज नॉट अ सॉल्वेबल प्रॉब्लम ओके डेफिनेट आंसर्स इज सॉल्वेबल एंड इनडेफिनेट आंसर्स और आंसर्स दैट डिपेंड्स ऑन प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ सिचुएशन आर अनसॉल्वेबल आंसर्स राइट राइट रेह ओके you should have a definite answer right very good you should no you should prove that this is the solution or you should prove that because of this there is no solution then it is known as solvable problem hello ma'am yeah so basically uh, till the time you don't prove that a problem is unsolvable it is considered as solvable right no it is always unsolvable okay till you prove that there is a solution may be positive or negative it is unsolvable okay ma'am okay the problems which are now known as un uh, solvable problem were once unsolvable okay now if you see few years before uh if i i if i say that uh uh that we can see this uh, virtual city it was unsolvable 
but now it is solvable because now actually we can see we have that right so that is solvable once we, you will you get the solution then the problem becomes solvable till then that problem is unsolvable okay it's not that ki iska solution ho sakta hai hoga it is not that mathematically you have the proof that this problem has the solution mathematically you have the solution that this problem is not it has no solution then it is solvable is this okay i hope this is clear students kshitej sonu yes ma'am Rehan, is this clear? Okay, students. Any other doubt? Okay, so we'll start with uh, our uh, actual syllabus in the next lecture. Okay, I'll give you the attendance. just give me 2 minutes i'll give you the attendance okay one more thing uh a division students uh, your roll number is uh, starts with 4 uh, right you people have given 3 345 357 360 just check it out and uh, b division students please you people also make it 4 you are in fourth semester now right so make it 4 okay your roll number should start with 4 okay i have uh, shared a form with you please fill the form for your attendance okay students so we'll end our lecture uh, today here okay we'll meet again in our next lecture hope to see you all okay take care jala thank you ya mag aata thank you to mag aata pan bhetu shakat hoti 12:30 ji okay uh, give the attendance and you can leave students thank you